لها سابقون أما بعد أيها الناس اتقوا الله واغتنموا أعماركم بالأعمال الصالحة فإنها تنقضي سريعا واعلموا أنها تم بكم أوقات الفضائل ومواسم الخيرات والنفعات فالسعيد من تنبه لها واستفاد منها والشقي من غفل عنها وضيع نفسه قال صلى الله عليه وسلم الكيس من دان نفسه يعني حاسبها وعمل لما بعد الموت والعاجز من أتبع نفسه هواها وتمنى على الله الأماني عباد الله مضت أشهر الحج إلى بيت الله الحرام وطوي لوضيها صفحة من صفحات أعمارنا قد سجل فيه قد سجل فيها ما عملناه في تلك الأشهر من خير أو شر لقد مضت أشهر أشهر الحج بخيراتها وبركاتها فلنحاسب أنفسنا ماذا استفدنا ماذا عملنا فيها فإن كان خيرا حمدنا الله سبحانه وتعالى وسألناه القبول والزيادة من الخير وإن كان شرا استغفرنا الله منه وأستغفر واتبعناه بالحسنات التي تقول All praise in his due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty the creator and he sent a blessings to our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his companions household and all those who follow them in good until the day of judgment my dear brothers and sisters in Islam it is the nature of uh, humankind to classify everything that is happening around them and it is a common nature as well for human beings to classify either between being wise or between being foolish if you look into business a wise businessman is the one who knows the opportunities when they are coming in and is able to make good use of them to the benefit of his business so that towards the end of that uh, opportunity then he can be able to count how much profit he's made. The same thing, a wise student is the one who knows that they have to prepare for their exam so that when he actually come or she actually comes to sit for the exam, they know that they are confident they're going to pass the exam. And the same would be in each and every sector of life. Whereas a foolish person or a foolish individual is the one who will always be unplanned we're unwilling to learn and he just uh, run his life haphazardly, not bothering and hoping, always hoping that something is going to happen which will make him to be successful. If it happens, well and good. If it doesn't happen, that's the way in which they carry on their lives. For us as Muslims, we have better than that. And for us as Muslims, we look at the Prophet وسلم, and his guidance, which actually I came across a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, which if we understood it and put it into practice, then definitely we are going to be considered to be amongst those wise people, not only in this world, but as well as in the hereafter. He says to Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Kayyis man dana nafsahu وعمل لما بعد الموت والعاجز من أتبع نفسه هواها وتمنى على الله الأماني. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is quoted to have said in this hadith, which a Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله is classifying it among the good hadith, that a wise person or a wise individual. Is that individual who holds himself to account, so he doesn't just indulge himself in evil or bad deeds, and he works for the hereafter. Whereas a foolish person is that individual who subdues himself, man atba subdues himself to the temptations of his soul, 
and sit expecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hoping that he's going to forgive him or he's going to uh, reward him. Recently, we just finished the Muslim Hajj and we asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all those who did ibadat during this time. For those who went for Hajj, Allah accept their Hajj. For those who made use of the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he actually referred to them as the best days and the days most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than any other time during the whole year. And we encouraged to do a lot of good deeds. Some of us fasted quite a number of the days, particularly on the day of Arafah. Other people encouraged themselves to do good deeds, whether it was giving in sadaqa or being good to their neighbors or anything that would be regarded as a good deed, even if it means calling your close relatives who you haven't spoken to for a very long time. Other people did the Qurbani, whether it was here, the only, whether it was here or it was somewhere abroad. But all in all, it was an opportunity, a good opportunity for you as a Muslim to be able to make good use of it so that when it comes to an end, you can sit back and count how did I profit from that opportunity which has just come and gone? Just as how a big, a good businessman would sit back after the end of the business period, counting how did I do in this business period of man which had just gone by. So for, for quite a lot of us, those who, are, those who are going to be joyful and happy are those who made good use of that opportunity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for all that you did and you need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept. Because the one thing to do a good duty and it's another thing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it. So once you've done any good duty, al-a'mal salih, then you need to turn around, not to feel proud, not to look down upon others, not to walk on the, on, on the heads of other people, no. But we need to sit back and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for acceptance, which in Islam is referred to as al qabul If Allah gives you that tawfiq to accept your good deeds, then that's the best which you can be able to ask for. So the first 10 days of the month of the religion have gone by with all its blessings and all its barakah. And here now we are today, looking, at, looking back at what we are doing and seeking the goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There will be quite a number of us as well who have shortcomings. And human beings are made of shortcomings. And that's why we are human beings. We are made of shortcomings. So there are those who have a lot of shortcomings during this period and during a lot of other periods which are best periods for us to be able to gain the best from them. What do we need to do? We need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness as well as what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked us is whenever you, you realize that you have had a shortcoming, follow it with a good deed. Inshallah, it's going to wipe out the bad deed or the shortcoming that you have had. That you have had. So that's the situation in which we are in at this particular moment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has legislated for us a very important thing after doing any good deed. When you finish your prayers, the first thing you do is to seek for istighfar. You say, astaghfirullah. When you finish our fasting, we seek for istighfar. So after the finishing of any act of worship, it is recommended for you to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to for forgiveness. Why is that? Somebody might think that, well, I've just done a good thing, I should pack my back. Why should I ask for forgiveness again? Haven't, I haven't done anything wrong, I didn't push myself. That is not the case. Because for you as a Muslim, as you've mentioned, is that once you have done an act of worship, you don't know, is it going to be acceptable? Or is it not going to be acceptable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And however hard you try to perfect your act of worship, whether it's your prayers, or it's your fasting, or it's your sacrifice, or it's any good deed that you're doing, then you're sure that there will be some shortcomings that are going to be there. 
So in order to recover these shortcomings, that is why we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for istighfar after the completion of a good deed. If there were any shortcomings in your act of worship, then that would cover it. If you overcome or you overlook some other bits which were necessary or important, but because of your nature of a, as a human being, you could not be able to live to that standard, then as well, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you for the weaknesses of your own soul, that you could not be able to live up to the standards that were required or that were kept by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and explained by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the juncture that we are in, brothers and sisters in Islam. Now that Ramadan has gone, now that the Muslim al Hajj has gone, but this is where we are today. Tomorrow we are looking forward to another good looking, another good opportunity. Because soon and very soon, this year, this Islamic year is going to come to an end. And new Islamic year is going to come. And that will be preceded by the month which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to it as the Shahullah al-Muharram, al-Muharram, which is the first month of the Islamic calendar. During that month as well, there are opportunities for you to be able to do some good deeds. أَقُولُ مَنْ تَسْمَعُونَ وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ يَغْفِرُ لَكُمْ الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وما توفيقنا لاعتصامنا إلا بالله قال الله تبارك وتعالى فإذا قضيت مناسكه فاذكروا الله كذكركم آباءكم أو أشد ذكرا فمن الناس من يقول ربنا آتنا في الدنيا وما له في الآخرة من خلاق ومنهم من يقول ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنا وفي الآخرة حسنا وقنا عذاب النار أولئك لهم نصيب مما كسبوا والله سريع الحساب. Allah subhanahu wa taala has encouraged us, particularly when you go to this verse, which comes in between the verses explaining about the rules and regulations about Hajj. Then Allah subhanahu wa taala is reminding whether you are going to be the pilgrim or you're going to be the one who is listening to these verses or reciting them. فإذا قضيت مناسك فاذكروا الله كذكركم آباءكم أو أشد ذكرا. The Arabs prior to Islam, what they used to do is once they've gone to Mecca for their pilgrimage, in whatever form they were doing it, after completing the pilgrimage, then they would sit down and start remembering their forefathers and what they used to do and how they used to operate. And that was the end of their, of their period. Because that's all, that was the objective. Just to sit and remember and talk about what they did and what their fathers did and what they used to do. And some of them will say, well, my, 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 my dad or my grandparents, they used to be quite rich, so I ask you to give me richness as well as how they used to be. That is where their focus used to be. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes us as the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he always gives us something better. And he sent to us the Prophet Rahmatun Lil Alameen, who, due to his mercy to us, then he didn't stop anything which would be able to make us that Ummatun Mutamayyiza, a model community. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reminded us that once we finish any of the Hajj uh, proceedings, Fadkurullaha kadhikrikum abaakum aw ashadda dhikra. Then you should remember Allah. Just as how you used to remember your forefathers or even much harder. So the focus has been changed here. Instead of people when they finish their acts of worship to sit down and look back and think of their achievement and think of what their parents or their grandparents did and think of all the other worldly things, the focus has completely been changed. The focus should be that when you finish your acts of worship, then you need to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because 
for those who used to remember only worldly things, then all that they used to do is Rabbana atina fi dunya. They only used to ask Allah, give us in this world. They didn't have any, anything for the hereafter. But Allah didn't want us that from us. Allah wants us to get the nasib of this dunya as well as to get the opportunities for the akhirah. So that's why as a believer, once you have completed any act of worship, you need to sit down and raise your hands and say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al nar. Oh Allah, give us in this dunya what is good and in the akhirah as well what is good. Wa qina adab al nar. And protect us from hellfire. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from hellfire, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be amongst those who are going to ask for the good of this world as well as for the good of the hereafter. Because this is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has put as a yardstick for the people who are wise people. They don't only think about this world, but actually they think about the hereafter. And they change all their life so that at least it can work for them for this world as well as for the hereafter. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kida adab al naa. Rabbana la tuzir kulubana ba'da id hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka anta wahab. Allahumma arina al-haq haqqan wa tukna al-tiba'a wa arina al-baatula baatina wa sujna al-tiba'a 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 wa sujna al-tiba'a